Okay, welcome to uh, our set of notes for unit on cell transport. We're going to be talking about passive transport today um, and what that means and how substances move across the membrane without the use of energy. So first of all, we need to set up a couple of things, and the first thing we need to talk about is this word called concentration. And concentration simply refers to the amount of something in a specific space. So the number of people in the room would be an example of concentration. Um, the amount of sugar in your soda is concentration. Um, and so you can see in this diagram down here, here's a membrane. Okay, It's semi-permeable. There are holes in it so things can move through it. Um, and we can see that these molecules of dye are able to fit through, and so there is a high concentration of molecules of dye over here and a very low concentration or zero concentration here. And in nature, things tend to want to balance out, and so molecules will move across this membrane until they're relatively equal on both sides. So now the concentration on this side is equal to the concentration on that side. And that's going to come into play uh, later on when we start discussing what we've been seeing in class. Now there's something also called a concentration gradient. And for those of you guys that are in art, um, you may have heard about color gradients and, and shadow gradients. Um, it's the same basic thing. It's a difference in the concentration of a substance across a space. So you can see in this example here, we have a high concentration here where there's a lot of uh, shade. And then as we move along, we go down the concentration gradient until we get to a very low concentration of this shading where it's basically white now. So it's like you're moving downhill. We're going down the concentration gradient. You can think of it like this guy on his mountain bike. If he's going down the concentration gradient, it's very easy to go downhill, moving from a high concentration to a low concentration, moving from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain. He's going from high to low. It's very easy to do that. You don't need to use energy for this to happen. And that is what is happening with this process that we know as passive transport. So we'll see some examples of that in a moment. Uh, like I said, things want to reach what we call an equilibrium. Uh, in nature, things want to be balanced. They want to move down their concentration gradient from an area of high concentration to low concentration until they're equal. They're going to keep moving until they reach this equilibrium when the concentration is the same on both sides of the membrane. Keep this idea in mind when you're thinking about what we saw in class these last couple days. So passive transport is defined as movement from high to low concentration, from the top of a hill to the bottom of the hill. You start at the top and go to the bottom, you're moving from high to low, just like these kids on this slide. They are moving down the gradient. Okay? It doesn't require energy. If you're at the top of that water slide, all you really got to do is just lean forward a little bit, and you're going to go down that water slide whether you like it or not. And I think the little girl over here in the blue didn't really like it so much. Um, there's three types of passive transport that we're going to talk about, and they're called diffusion, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion. So let's visit those. Diffusion is first, and here's a really, really common example of diffusion. Um, you put dye into a beaker, and here it is very highly concentrated where you first drop it in, but over time those molecules spread out to be evenly spaced, and they reach equilibrium, and they fill up the entire beaker. Okay. Um, so it's movement of molecules from high to low concentration until they reach equilibrium. So it's high concentration here, it's low concentration everywhere else, but after a certain amount of time they're equally distributed um, to reach equilibrium. So here are some examples of the, you see this in everyday life. You can smell bacon cooking in another room, right? You wake up on a Saturday morning and you smell this lovely scent of bacon in your room and you think, oh wow, somebody is in my room cooking bacon right next to my bed. But you know that that's not what's happening. The bacon is being cooked in the kitchen, down the hallway, um, on the other side of the house but you can smell it because it diffuses. It's highly concentrated in the kitchen where it's being prepared. It was a low concentration in your room, but those molecules diffused from that high concentration to that low concentration. Same thing um, like I just showed you in this example, food coloring mixes by itself. You don't actually have to stir it. You just let it sit there and it will evenly distribute out. Try it at home. If you've got a glass and some water and some food coloring, ask mom or dad for some food coloring and try it. Put a drop of food coloring in a glass of water 
don't move it, and see what happens. This applies to biology because this is how oxygen gets into our blood. There's a low oxygen content in our blood. There's a high oxygen content in our lungs. So as the blood moves through the capillaries in the lungs, the oxygen goes from an area of high concentration, which is the lungs, to an area of low concentration, which is your blood. And that's how oxygen actually gets into the blood. So that's what this has to do with biology. Now, osmosis is a little bit different. It's diffusion, but it's specifically diffusion of water. So this is when water molecules are moving. This is not anything else. This is simply water molecules moving across a membrane, going from where water is highly concentrated to where water is in lower concentration. Okay. Now, going back, if you look at diffusion, yes, this is happening in water, but it's these ink molecules that are moving. See how they went from here to all over the place? Well. Osmosis is when the water molecules themselves move. You can see here the water is on two sides of this membrane. Okay, There's more of these over here than, than these. Water moves across the membrane. Look at this. The water level has gone down on this side because the water molecules are moving. Osmosis is the movement of water. So think about this. Most of us have eaten really salty foods, and you get really thirsty. Well, the reason for that is that you eat all these salty foods. That salt gets into your blood. Now your blood is really, really salty. And as that salty blood travels by your cells, it actually draws water out of your cells because the water is moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. If there's a lot of salt in your blood, it means that the concentration of water is lower. Water will then move from the cells into your blood, and then that's going to go through your kidneys and you're going to pee. And then not only have you dehydrated your cells, but now you're getting rid of that water in your urine and you're going to get thirsty. Um, this is happening when you sit in the bathtub for too long. Uh, water diffuses from the pool into the cells on your skin. There's obviously more water in the pool than there is water in your skin. Okay, So um, it's going to move from the high concentration of water, which is in the pool, into the low concentration of water, which is in the cells of your skin. And so they swell up, and that's why they look all wrinkly. When you put salt on a slug, first of all, you're a murderer. Second of all, um, what's actually happening is you're pulling water out of that slug. You are literally dehydrating the cells of that slug, and it's terrible, and it's awful, and my alma mater are the UC Santa Cruz banana slugs, and I think that you need to apologize right now. Right? So the last type of uh, transport is called facilitated diffusion. Now, it's a little bit different um, in that it's still movement from high to low concentration. It's still across a gradient. It's across a membrane. But it, this just uses channel proteins. So this is when the molecules are too big to go through on their own. So something that's bigger than water or whatever. Um, there's channel proteins we talked about already. Uh, and things are still moving down a concentration gradient. You can see it's a high concentration, low concentration here. So they're moving down the gradient, and when they go down the gradient, it doesn't require energy. Um, but these molecules just need a little extra help. Um, to facilitate something means to help something. Okay, If you uh, facilitate um, a discussion, it means that you are helping to lead that discussion. So it simply means helped diffusion, and it's helped by these um, channel proteins. Okay. So those are our three types of passive transport. Uh, osmosis diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Um, I'll be showing you guys a little diagram to help you remember all of these things uh, as we move on through our unit. So go ahead and go to the Google form and answer your summary question, and I will see you guys tomorrow.